وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد As always, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with praises and exaltations that only He is worthy of. We begin by sending His salawat and His salamat, His blessings and His peace upon the last and final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam wa ba'd. Then alhamdulillahi ta'ala thumma alhamdulillahi ta'ala uh, I'm thankful to the brothers here at Masjid Sunnah Nabawiyah uh, for arranging once again the summer conference and for picking such a, a simple but but monumental, a very important book. A book that in, very, in a very concise manner, it gathers into it the manhaj al-salafi. It gathers into it the manhaj al-salafi. So, truly I could not think of a book which was short enough, concise enough, but at the same time, gathered in it so much information. So indeed, it was an excellent choice and may Allah Ta'ala wa ta reward the organizers for those that have put in the time and may Allah Ta'ala uh, reward those that have traveled, Alhamdulillah Ta'ala. As from our previous lesson I noticed, Alhamdulillah many of the children were from, uh, uh, from some distant states, MashaAllah. So may Allah Jalla Jalaluhu reward everyone that is partaking uh, in this dawra ilmiya, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. The asal today, ikhwan wa akhawat, Allah, Allah jalla jalaluhu yubarik fikum, is as Shaykh uh, Hassan, he mentioned, it is a very important affair. Rather, it is an affair for which we are hated by all sides. This affair in itself is the distinguishing affair where people on both sides, on all sides, uh, uh, they, they use it as a cause of hatred against the manhaj al-Salafi, or against the Salafi themselves. And it builds upon the asal that a Shaykh Abu al-Hasan, Allah Ta'ala that he went, uh, uh, that he explained prior to this lesson. And that is the asal of al-ijtima' wa adam al-tafarruq. The asal of our deen, ikhwati, Allah ta'ala yubarik fikum, is that it came to unite us. It came to remove our differences. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Remember that you were enemies one to the other. You were enemies one to the other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His mercy and by His blessing brought your hearts together. وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَاهُ حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ 
فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا يعني Allah, you were upon the brink to the fire of Jahannam. You were about to fall into the fire of Jahannam, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from it. And the religion of Islam, it has come to join us together, to unite us upon the truth. And if we look at every aspect of the religion, and if we contemplate, for example, over the five pillars of Islam, the very basics of Islam, the shahadatain, iqamat as-salah, wa ita zakah wa sawm Ramadan, wa hajj al-bayt, you will find that in each one of these pillars, from the pillars of Islam, is a factor of that it unites us together. So the shahada and la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah the, the, test, the two testimonies of faith, they unite us in the worship of one God. And upon a, uh, uh, and upon a single sunnah, a single manner of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we're not divided into madhahib and we're not divided into this tariqah and that tariqah, but we have the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And that is what unites us. And the iqamat as-salah, that we unite together in the masajid at the same time, and the adhan calls all the Muslims together, and we pray together in the, uh, uh, in the masajid. And the zakah which is taken from the rich of us and given to the poor of us. And the fasting of the month of Ramadan where the entire ummah is fasting one singular month. And the making of hajj as our brothers and our sisters are doing as we speak right now. And then outside of this, if we look at all of the ayat, all of the ahadith that speak of brotherhood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ Indeed the believers, they are brothers one to the other. الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِي كَالْبُنْيَانِ يَشُدُّ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا The believer to the believer is like, a, is like a building, they support each other. لَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ None of you believes until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Everything in Islam is to bring about unity. But as a Shaykh Abul Hassan, Allah Ta'ala Yafadhu, he said, there are a hadith that point to us that disunity will occur. This ummah shall divide into 73 sects, all of them in the fire but one. So what are the reasons? What are the reasons why this disunity occurs? And this asal that we are speaking of today is from at the very core of the reasons. Since the time of the Khulafa al Rashidun, that when this door was broken, there's a, there's a hadith in the Sahih of Imam al Bukhari that Umar bin al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was sitting, he was sitting. And in the gathering was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. And he asked, he said, which one of you has memorized the hadith regarding the fitan? Regarding the trials and tribulations. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiallahu ta'ala, he said that the, the fitna to rajul, yani those trials and tribulations that we go through in our families, in our wealth, our children, our neighbors, then those are removed by way of our good deeds. The salah and sadaqah and zakah and amr bin ma'roof and nahi al munkar. So, Umar bin al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, That's not what I'm asking of. But rather, I'm asking, and he describes the fitna. He said, Tamuju ka mawj al bahr. He said, I'm asking of that fitna that's going to come like the waves of the ocean. Now Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is the one that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told what? What did Hudayfa know? The names of the munafiqoon. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam, would share knowledge with Hudayfa. That was not known to others, such as the names of the munafiqoon. Right? Umar bin al-Khattab would go to Hudayfa. Billahi alayka Hudayfa. By Allah, I'm asking you. So Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says to Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, you have nothing to worry about. فَإِنَّ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهَا بَابٌ مُغْلَقٌ He says, 
O Amir al Mu'mineen, don't worry about that. There is between you and that fitna, there is what? A closed door. Babun Mughlaq. So Umar bin al Khattab, he says, is the door going to be broken or is it going to be opened? Is the door going to be broken or is it going to be opened? So Hudayfa says, rather, bal yuksar. It's going to be what? Broken. And this is very important. It's very important because if the door is broken, then Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, then it's never going to be closed again. Because a door which is opened can be closed. But if the door is broken, then Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, it's never going to be, it's never going to be closed again. And the narration is long and at the end of it they ask Hudayfa that did Umar know who or what the door is? And he said, yes, I narrated to him the narration. And finally, asked, who is the door? And Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala, uh, uh, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he said the door is Umar bin al-Khattab. Is Umar bin al-Khattab, he himself is the door. And there were occurrences that opened in the khilaf of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu regarding this affair that we're speaking of. And after it has been opened, that door has remained open. And that fitna has continued to occur until our day, until this day of ours here. And it is the Salafi, it is the Salafi that stands in defense of this asal. You're not going to find anyone else defend this asal like the Salafi defends the asal. No one else. But rather they'll come with, well, this, the meaning is this and the meaning is that. This isn't what intended and that was. La. It is the Salafi that stands in defense of this asal. Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Aslu al-Thalith, the third asal. The third principle. Anna min tamam al ijtima'i asam'u wa ta'atu. From the perfection of unity is asam'u wa ta'a, is hearing and obeying. Meaning that this unity which we strive for, which we want, cannot be attained illa bi sam'i wa ta'a. Except that there is hearing the orders of the Imam, of the Amir, of the Khalifa, of the leader of the Muslims, and obeying that order. أَنَّ مِنْ تَمَامِ الْإِجْتِمَاعِ أَسَّمْعُ وَطَاعَةُ لِمَنْ تَأَمَّرَ عَلَيْنَا وَلَوْ كَانَ عَبْدًا حَبَشِيًا So hearing and obeying. The orders of those that have been placed in authority amongst us, over us. And even if they are an Ethiopian slave. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has clarified this asal. This principle is clarified. The clarification is muntashir. It's spread amongst the people. Everyone knows these narrations. And fi'lan, everyone knows these narrations. Everyone knows these narrations, even those that, that want to remove this asal, they know the narrations. So they come and they make that we love it, that the meaning is this, no, the meaning was that, no, it's not intended here. This is what they mean. So they know the, even they know this. And the Prophet ﷺ, he clarified this from all different angles. However, he could clarify, he clarified it, shar'an. 
in the sharia legislatively and by the affairs of the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for this ummah. This affair has been clarified. Yani, there are events that have occurred. There are events that have occurred with this ummah that show the importance of this asal. That show the importance of this asal. Thumma sara هذا الأصل لا يعرف عند أكثر عند أكثر من يدعي العلم فكيف العمل به He said then this asal, this principle which is well known and well established right? It, is well, it was well known and well established amongst the sahaba Then it became لا يعرف يعني no one knew of it The people stopped, stopped recognizing it in the أَكْثَرِ مَنْ يَدْعِيَ الْعِلْمَ With the majority of those that claim to have knowledge. فَكَيْفَ الْعَمَلُ بِهِ Then how? How is it that anyone is going to act upon this asal? Obedience to the wulat al-umur. Obedience to the leaders of the Muslims. And establishing a relationship with them Especially in this era, especially in this era of globalization, right? Where communication is done easily. And anyone can stand up and speak about any affair. So a person may say, we're here, we're in the gharb, what do we have to do? No. This concerns us. This affair, it concerns us. And this obligation of Obeying the leaders of the Muslims. This is not an obligation established by, for example, a statement of the Sahaba. Even though there are statements of the Sahaba, right? Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He would say, O oh people, indeed we have a right upon you. So if you want to advise us, advise us in private. Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said this. This was known amongst the Sahaba. But the obligation of it is established by the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the statement of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It is not for the believing man nor the believing woman that when Allah and his messenger have decreed an affair that they should have a choice in that affair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah An-Nisa, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah An-Nisa, O you who believe, and again this is important, because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, what follows it is from the requirements of iman, meaning that whatever Allah jalla jalaluhu is about to say, whatever is going to come in this ayah, it is from the requirements of your iman. If you say you are a believer, the requirement of your iman is what? أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ Obey Allah وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُلِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and obey those that have been put in authority amongst you. And obey those that have been put in authority amongst you. فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ Now, if there occurs a disagreement amongst you, as it is natural that a disagreement will occur. It will occur amongst Ammatun Nas, amongst the general people. It will occur between the rulers and the ulema. It will occur between the ulema and ulema. فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ When you differ about something and disagree about something, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you believe in Allah in the last day, return your disagreement 
back to Allah and His Messenger. ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا That is better for you. That is better for you. وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا And it's better in interpretation of that for you too. To return it back to Allah and His Messenger. In this ayah, it is a proof that obedience to the rulers is an obligation in itself. Obedience to the rulers is an obligation in itself. Meaning what? Meaning that if the ruler orders you with something which is outside of the obligations of Islam, yani it is an amr which is what? It's an affair which is mubah, which is allowed. It is an affair which is allowed. It's not an obligation. Nor is it an affair which is what? which is haram, which is forbidden, then obedience to the waliul amr, obedience to the ruler is an obligation upon you. I was in Pakistan a few years ago and they asked a question. Because there's a law in Pakistan that if someone is going to get married, a second wife or a third wife or a fourth wife, they must get written permission from the previous wives. So they asked, they said, well this is not a, this is not what? A legislated, it has not come in the sharia, so do we need to obey it? And the answer is what? Yes, you need to obey it. Because the taking of a second or a third or a fourth wife, right, is not an oblig it is not a shari obligation, mutlaqan. Right? It is not an absolute obligation. And there is a reason for this. So yes, you must obey them. If it was that you have to obey the rulers, in only what Allah and His Messenger ﷺ had ordered, then what? Then it would have been sufficient that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what? أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and His Messenger. That would have sufficed us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And those that have been put in authority amongst you. As for the hadith, a hadith, the sunnah, The hadith of Irbab ibn Sariya وَعَذَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَوْمًا بَعْدَ صَلَاةِ الْغَدَاتِ مَوْعِظَةً بَلِيغَةً ذَرَفَتْ مِنْهَا الْعُيُونَ وَوَجِلَتْ مِنْهَا الْقُلُوبِ He said, Al-Irbab ibn Sariya, he said one day the Prophet of Allah عليه وسلم, after the after the salah, he gave us a sermon. He gave us a reminder, a sermon. And the sermon was such that it caused us to cry. And it shook our hearts. فَقَالَ رَجُلْ إِنَّ هَذِهِ مَوْعِذَةُ مَوَدِّعِ Said, Ya Rasulullah, it's as though this is a farewell sermon. فَمَاذَا تَعْهُدُ, تعهد إِلَيْنَا What is it that you advise us with? What is it that you order us with? قَالَ I advise you with the taqwa of Allah, with the, with the fear of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Doing what Allah ta'ala has ordered you to do, refraining from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited you from. وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَاعَةِ And I advise you, I order you with hearing and obeying. وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَاعَةِ وَإِنْ عَبْدٌ حَبَشِيٌّ Even if it is an Ethiopian slave. And even if it is someone who's not from amongst you. Right? Because غَالِبًا if you are in an area, the leader is from who? It's from amongst the people. It's from amongst them. And this is Jaziratul Arab. Even if it is someone not from amongst you, and he's a slave. Even if they have been made your leader then hear them and obey them. And this was to show the obligation that regardless of who your leader is, the obligation remains of hearing and obeying and not removing your hand from their bay'ah, not removing your hand from their allegiance, not removing your hand from their obedience. فَإِنَّهُمْ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ يَرَى اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Whomsoever lives from amongst you will see much division. 
And be aware of newly invented matters. For indeed, they are all acts of, uh, 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 all acts of falsehood or astrayness. The one from amongst you that sees that time, فَعَلَيْهِ بِسُنَّتِي Upon him is my sunnah. Stick to my sunnah. وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ And upon you is the sunnah of my rightly guided khulafa. عَضُّ عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِذْ Bite onto it with your molar teeth. These two, these two proofs, one from the Qur'an, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second from the sunnah, the statement of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are the standing proof of the obligation of hearing and obeying the leaders of the Muslims. It is the statement of Allah and it is the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And upon this, all of these books that we have studied, that have the mention of this affair, Imam al-Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, وَلَا نَرَىٰ الْخُرُوجَ عَلَىٰ أَئِمَّتِنَا وَوُلَاتِ أُمُورِنَا We do not see revolting against our imams, against our leaders. وَإِن جَارُوا وَلَا نَدْعُ عَلَيْهِمْ Even if they are oppressive, we do not make dua against them. وَلَا نَنْزِعُ يَدًا مِنْ طَاعَتِهِمْ We do not remove our hand from their obedience. وَنَرَى طَاعَتَهُمْ مِنْ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ We see our obedience to the leader of the Muslims to be obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَرِيضَةً As an obligation. مَا لَمْ يَأْمُرُ بِمَعْصِيَةٍ As long as they do not order us to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَدْعُ لَهُمْ بِالصَّلَاحِ وَالْمُعَافَاتِ and we make dua for them. And we make dua for them for their correction and for their forgiveness. This statement, Fulayr ibn Iyad, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahimahumullah ta'ala, there's statements like this from them. That if we knew we had one dua, one dua mustajaba that will be answered, we would make the dua for the leader of the Muslims. For the leader of the Muslims. Allahu Akbar. Now, you find, look at these people and these Islamic activists, most of them living in the West, following their few numbers and few ideologues that they have living in the Muslim lands, that upon a Hajj portal, they are all over the internet. Look at this hukuma, look at the Hajj portal. Subhanallah, this man did not make Hajj, this man. Yani, they haven't even oppressed you have not even oppressed you. And you are here making dua against them. And Imam al-Tahawi rahimahullah ta'ala, Hanafi Imam by the way, says that even if they are oppressive, nad'u lahum bis salahi. We'll make dua for them, Ya Allah, correct their affair. Wal mu'afati, Ya Allah, forgive them. Al-Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala, a humble Imam, وَالسَّمْعُ وَالطَاعَةُ لِلْأَئِمَّةِ فِي مَا يُحِبُّ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَى وَمَنْ وَلِيَ الْخِلَافَةَ بِإِجْمَاعِ النَّاسِ عَلَيْهِ وَرِضَاهُمْ بِهِ فَهُوَ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Obedience, hearing and obeying the leader, the imams, in what Allah Ta'ala loves and is pleased with. And rather we say, even in what is mubah, even in what is not something that is legislated in Islam, but it is not haram. If the leader orders you with it, then it is an obligation upon you to hear them and to obey them. So, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us with this obedience. And the author he says, فَبَيَّنَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ هَذَا بَيَانًا شَائِعًا ذَائِعًا بِكُلِّ وَجْهٍ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الْبَيَانِ شَرْعًا وَقَدَرًا يعني In the legislation you have sufficient amounts of proof. يعني you have so many proofs that they have to step out of their way to try to get around them. 
Meaning that what? They can't just ignore them. They specifically step out of their way to try to get around what is legislated in the Quran and the Sunnah. But qadran, look at all of the havoc that has been created in the Muslim lands. If you want to know the importance of this asal, then look at Syria, then look at Libya. Look at what happened in Egypt. Look at how many deaths have occurred. Up until today, Libya does not have a functioning government. Why? Because instead of taking the path of Quran and Sunnah, we chose the path of the communists. We chose the path of the socialists. We chose the path of the revolutionaries. And we thought that that path was better. It was better to be like the revolutionaries. It was better to be like the Republicans, those that call to a republic, or the Democrats, those that call to a democracy. It was better to be like them. And that this affair of a sam'u wa ta'a was a backwards, was a backwards idea. So now look at those lands. So why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us with obeying the leaders? It is as Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, as he mentioned, it is min tamam al Unity amongst the Muslims is an impossibility without a waliul amr, without a leader from amongst the Muslims. It is an impossibility. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Wali anna Allah ta'ala awjab al amra bil ma'rufi wa nahya an al munkar. Why is it that Allah Ta'ala has ordered us bisam'i wa ta'a with hearing and obeying? Why? Why? Shaykh al-Islam, he says, why? Because Allah obligated us bil amri bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. Allah Ta'ala, he said, you have to order what is good and forbid what is evil. وَلَا يُتِمُّ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا بِقُوَّةٍ وَإِمَارَةٍ That is an impossibility except that there is leadership and strength. It is an impossibility to complete the rights of Islam except that there is strength amongst the Muslims. Except that there is leadership amongst the Muslims. وَكَذَلِكَ سَائِرُ مَا أَوْجَبَهُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْجِهَادِ وَالْعَدْلِ وَإِقَامَةِ الْحُدُودِ لَا تُتِمُّ إِلَّا بِالْقُوَّةِ Everything that Allah Ta'ala has ordered. All of the affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated from jihad and adal and justice wa iqamat al-hudud and establishing the penalties of Islam. It cannot be done except that there is leadership and there is power in that leadership. So the tenets of Islam cannot be established except that there is leadership and there is power in that leadership. Al-Imam Al-Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, As-sawabu anna al-murada min al-khabri bi luzum al-jama'a al-ladhina fi ta'ati man ijtama'u ala ta'meelihi. To show that the ijtima'a, our unity is an impossibility without a sam'u wa ta'a. Unity is an impossibility. It will not occur illa bi sam'i wa ta'a. Imam Al-Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, what is correct? المراد من الخبر بلزوم الجماعة الذين في طاعة من اجتمعوا على تأميله يعني when we have been ordered بلزوم الجماعة right when the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he says ستفترق هذه الأمة على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة this أمة will divide into 73 sects قيل من هم يا رسول الله قال هم الجماعة they are the جماعة why is it that we were ordered with the جماعة what does that mean هم الجماعة what does that mean the جماعة he said, هُوَ طَاعَةُ مَنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَى تَأْمِيلِهِ It is obedience. It is obedience to those under whose leadership the people have agreed, the people have gathered. How they come to that leadership is a different story. That there is more than one leader that occurred in the time of the Sahaba. It occurred in the time of the Sahaba. And it was allowed, that allowance was given by Imam Malik, and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and Imam al-Shafi'i, and other than them. And other than them. Why? Because 
there is no establishment of the tenets of Islam to call the people to jama'ah in the masajid, to call the people to jumu'ah, iqamat al-hudud. This is not a possibility. Illa bi wali al-amr. Except that you have a leader. Except that you have a leader under whose leadership the people are gathered. فَمَنْ نَكَثَ عَنْ بَيْعَتِهِ خَرَجَ عَنِ الْجَمَاعَةِ The one, مَنْ نَكَثَ يعني The one who removes himself. أَخْلَفَ عَنْ بَيْعَتِهِ He leaves his allegiance to this imam. خَرَجَ عَنِ الْجَمَاعَةِ They have left the jama'ah. They are no longer a part of the jama'ah. وَقَدْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث أخرجه الإمام مسلم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من خرج عن الطاعة وفارق الجماعة فمات مات ميتة جاهلية The one who removes his hand from allegiance from the imam and then he dies and there is no allegiance he's not given allegiance to the imam of the Muslims then that man has died the death of jahiliyyah. The death of the days of ignorance. So we say, it is the obligation upon the wulat al-umur, upon ulil amr, those that have been given the authority to order the people and to obligate the people to do certain actions. They are the ones that obligate upon the people ittiba' al-shari'a. And from this angle we say, if we look at the ayah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And those that have yani, the authority amongst you. And what does this mean? They have authority. وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Those that have the authority to what? Those that have the authority to order. Al-Amr. And the scholars... They're united on that ulul amr, the meaning of ulul amr is two factions from amongst the people. Al ulema wa wulat al umur. Because the ulema, the establishment of the sharia, the establishment of following Islam, it requires two affairs. Number one, it requires that the people are taught and educated about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them with. What Allah Ta'ala has prohibited them from, what Allah Ta'ala has allowed for them, what Allah Ta'ala has legislated for them. And this is the affair of the ulema. This is the affair of the ulema. And as for the umara, then they are the ones that are ordered to order the people with following what? What the ulema have taught. So where the ulema give importance to teaching the people of what? has already come, the wulat al-umur, they are those that are obligated with, with ordering the people to do what has already come in the books of legislation, what has already come in the Qur'an and in the ahadith of the Prophet wasalam. Now is this ta'a, is this obedience an obligation at every moment is it an obligation that never goes away, such as the salah? The salah is an obligation. Yani, there is practically no condition, except that a person becomes majnoon, right? There's practically no condition in which the salah is removed. Is this what obligation to the waliul amr is like? That it is an absolute obligation, whatever, whatever he says. And the answer of this is found in the ayah from Surah An-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah, obey Allah. So we have the what? Ati'u Allah. We have the fi'l. Wa ati'u rasul And obey the messenger. Wa ulil amri minkum. And those that have been put in authority amongst you. And here, the fi'l is not repeated. The verb is not repeated. The fi'l al-amr comes for Allah. It comes for the messenger. Wa ulil amri minkum. Meaning that as long as the hakim, the waliul amr, does not order you with something which is haram, which is ma'asiyah, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'atuhu 
faridatun alayk it is an obligation upon you to obey him as long as it is not haram it is not in disobedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's reported an ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعث جيشا وأمر عليهم رجلا. The Messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام he sent out an army. وأمر عليهم رجلا and he made a, a, a man. It said that he was a man from the Ansar that he made them made him the Amir of this the leader of this of this جيش of this army. فأوقد نارا this man he he builds, he, he orders his, his army to gather wood. Something occurs between them which causes him to become angry. So he orders them and he says, collect wood. And the Sahaba, they obey him. Because he is the Amir. And he says now, light it on fire. And they lit it on fire. He said, I'm your Amir. It is an obligation upon you to obey me. Jump into the fire. Jump into the fire. فَأَرَادَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا The Athar, it mentioned some of the people they wanted to enter it. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated upon them obedience to the Amir. Obedience to the leader. وَقَالَ الْآخَرُونَ إِنَّا قَدْ فَرَرْنَا مِنْهَا That we ran away from it. Some of them they said, we ran away from it. Meaning what? We, we accepted Islam running away from fire. How are we going to accept Islam and now jump into the fire? So they mentioned this to the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. فَقَالَ لِلَّذِينَ أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا He said to those that wanted to enter into the fire, لَوْ دَخَلْتُمُوهَا لَمْ تَزَالُوا فِيهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ If you would have jumped into the fire, you would have remained in the fire until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Why? Because you jumping into the fire would have been ma'asiya lillahi ta'ala. Would have been disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, لا طاعة في معصية الله There's no obedience في معصية الله In disobedience to Allah. الطاعة في المعروف الطاعة is in what is is, what, uh, is in what is ma'roof What is good what is righteous? That is where, where ta'a, it stays. As for ma'asiyah, then there is no obedience in that. Al-Imam Abu Abbas al-Qurtubi rahimahullah wa ta'ala, he says, sahib al-mufhim, he says, يعني بالمعروف ما ليس بمنكر ولا ma'asiyah. What is meant by ma'roof? Al-Imam al-Qurtubi, he says, what is meant by ma'roof, what is meant by al-ma'roof, مَا لَيْسَ بِمُنْكَرْ وَلَا مَعْصِيَةِ What is not a sin and what is not disobedience, that is ma'roof. As long as it is not sin and as long as it is not disobedience, then you have to obey them. فَيَدْخُلُ فِيهَا الطَّاعَةُ وَالْوَاجِبَةُ وَالْمَنْدُوبِ إِلَيْهَا وَالْأُمُورَ الْجَائِزَةُ شَرْعًا So when do you, this is Imam Abu Abbas al-Qurtubi, not Sahib al-Tafsir, Sahib al-Mufhim, in an explanation of Sahih Muslim. He says, when is obligation to the Amir an obligation? When is it obligatory to obey the Amir? It is obligatory to obey the Amir if he is telling you to do something which is wajib, which is an obligation in itself. If he is telling you to do something which is mandub, meaning what? It's mustahab. Up until the Imam ordering you to do it, it was what? It was mustahab. If you did it, if you did it, then falak al ajar. And if you didn't do it, fala shayalek. There's nothing upon you. But if the imam orders you to do it, if the imam orders you to do it, it becomes an obligation. And then he says, wal umur al jaizatu shar'an, and anything which is allowed in the sharia. Anything which is allowed in the sharia. In Pakistan, some weeks ago, there was the government set out a they set out a a uh, uh, an an advisory I guess for the people to drink less tea. This was an advisory. There was some reason for it. 
Upon the government saying that you need to drink less tea, what do you need to do? Drink less tea. That becomes an obligation. In obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't, and if you don't drink less tea, then you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِأَنَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي أَوْجَبَ عَلَيْكَ طَاعَةْ وَلِيَةِ الْأَمْرَ Allah obligated for you to obey the government. That was an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, there is an important point that we want to mention. A ta'atu fil ma'roof. La ta'a fi ma'asiyah. A Shaykh Adam al Ethiopi, Allah ta'ala yarhamu, he quotes, and he said, This hadith, this hadith is how you correct society. He says, لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق Don't obey the Amir if he is telling you to disobey Allah. فلا يطاع Amir The leader is not followed. ولا Imam The Imam is not obeyed. إن أمر بما هو معصية If he orders with what is the sin, the Imam is not obeyed. You do not need to obey the Imam. وَإِنَّ هَذَا الْمَبْدَأَ لَوْ عُمِلَ بِهِ فِي بِلَادِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ الْيَوْمِ لَأَغْنَى لَأَغْنَى عَنْ كَثِيرٍ مِنْ مِنَ الْإِطْرَابَاتِ If the people would just follow this hadith in the Muslim lands today, many of the issues would disappear. Many of the issues would disappear. لَإِطَّرَّتْ بِهِ الْحُكُومَاتِ إِلَى تَطْبِيقَ الشَّرِيعَةِ الْإِسْلَامِيَةِ فِي جَمِيعِ النَّوَاهِ الْحَيَاتِ The government would have no choice but to implement the sharia in the Muslim lands. What do we mean by this? What do we mean by this? If the governments of the Muslim lands, they open up banks with riba, they say, everyone put your money in the banks with riba. Can you put your money in the banks and get riba on it? No. And if the government stay open up what is haram, and they say, here, all of this is open, can you obey them in that? No. Right? So if no one is putting their money in the banks, what happens to the banks? They shut down. If no one's going to the cinemas, what happens to the cinemas? Shut down. If no one is buying what is haram, what happens to those companies? They shut down. This is the tariqah. This is how you correct society. Some decades ago, jamaat e islami jamaat e islami is the jama'a of Abu al-A'la al-Maududi. Abu al-A'la al-Maududi, he has a jama'a called jamaat al-Islami. In Pakistan, it operates up until today. And they took upon themselves, they don't teach tawheed. Yani Pakistan is one of those countries that has, I believe, over a hundred over 100 registered shrines. Shrines. Where graves, where people go, they make dua, they make sajda, they make ruku'ah. I've seen it with my own eyes. 100. And jamaat islami this jama'a of, of uh, 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 maududi, that was established in tatbiq al-shari'ah. They wanted to establish the shari'ah. They took it upon themselves that any billboard that had the picture of a woman on it, they would go and they would paint over the face. They would climb up the billboards. They would have black paint with them or white paint or whatever paint. And they would paint over the faces. They would paint over the faces. Right? And you paint it over the faces. What would the company do? Well, the company said, Oh, Khalas Jamaat Islami is doing this. We're not going to put up billboards anymore. They're going to take it down and put up a new billboard. I mean, Samsung has more money than Jamaat Islami does. Right? But if they were to give importance to the people and teach the people what is ma'asiyah, what is disobedience, and you can't do what is in disobedience to Allah, and if the rulers order you with that, then you can't obey them. This is a much safer, it is a much better, rather, it is the legislated manner. It is a part of the legislated manner to correct society. But rather than do this, rather than do this, 
We took as our example the French Revolution. We took as our example the American Revolution. We took as our example the Marxists. We took as our example the socialists. And we said, instead of following this and maintaining peace and security in our countries, where our children are safe and they are learning and they're going to schools, we're going to take this. And because of this, and being egged on by the West, by the people who carry the flag of democracy, that democracy is going to free the world. It's going to make everything better. Democracy will make everything better. Now go and look at Libya. Now go and look at Syria. And look at what democracy did to them. So we have established the obligation of obeying the Waliul Amr. We have established in what affairs you have to obey Waliul Amr. We have established when is it allowed to disobey the Waliul Amr. Then is it allowed to disobey and revolt against the Hakim which is Zalim, which is oppressive? Or is sinful. Salma ibn Yazid al Ja'afi, Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Lama sa'ala hu Salma ibn Yazid al Ja'afi, Ya Rasulullah. Araita in Kama ta'alina umara. Yes, anuna haqqa hum wa yam na'una haqqana. He said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you see? That if we had umara, if we had leaders that would ask us for their rights, وَيَمْنَعُونَ حَقَّنَا But would prevent us from attaining our rights. فَمَا تَأْمُرُنَا And he asked once, the Prophet ﷺ didn't answer. And he asked a second time, the Prophet ﷺ didn't answer. And then he asked a third time, and the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِسْمَعُوا وَأَطِيعُوا What is the condition? He said, these are leaders. Huh? Yes, anuna haqqahum. They ask us for their rights. Wayamnauna haqqana. They want us to give them their right. But they don't want to give us our right. They don't want to give us our right. Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Isma'u wa ati'u. Listen to them and obey them. Fa inna ma alayhim ma hammalu wa alaykum ma hummiltum. Upon them is what they have been obligated with And upon you is what you have been obligated with Meaning that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah Allah Ta'ala will ask them about what they did And Allah Ta'ala will ask you about what you did Pertaining to what was an obligation upon you Your obligation is that sam'u wa ta'a This is your obligation Al-Adal, Al-Hukmu Bil-Adal Was their obligation you're not going to be asked, did the hakim yahkum bil adal? That's not going to be the question that's going to be asked of you. You're going to be asked, what was an obligation upon you? Which was as sam'u wa ta'a. Which was hearing and obeying. This was the obligation upon you. Hadith collected by Imam Muslim, Imam Al-Tirmadhi, Ibn Abi Shayba, and Imam Al-Bayhaqi, rahimahumullah. It comes in the hadith of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman Lama sa'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman and we've already mentioned Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman He asked the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa sallam Inna kunna fi al-jahiliya wa shar We were in jahiliya and we were in uh, 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 shar in what was evil Fa ja'ana Allahu bihada al-khayr so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He came to us with this good. فَهَلْ بَعْدَ هَذَا الْخَيْرِ شَرٌ Will there be any, any evil which will occur after this? Will there be any harm that occurs after this? قَالَ نَعَمْ He said, yes. فَقُلْتُ هَلْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ شَرٌ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ After that evil, will there be any good? قَالَ نَعَمْ وَفِيهِ دَخَنْ He said, yes. وَفِيهِ دَخَنْ and we mentioned this. It was, yani, after this khair, 
It says, Iman and Islam. Is there going to be any, any shar? The Messenger of Allah said, Naam. The ulama from amongst them, or many of them, they say that the shar, what is intended by this harm, was the qatal of Uthman. The killing of Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That this is what is intended. And this was foretold. There's a, there's a hadith of uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu one day go out. And he was going to relieve himself. So he went to an area, there was a garden there, there was a door and so Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the doorman for the Prophet wasalam, today. So the Prophet wasalam, he went, he relieved himself, he cleaned, cleaned himself and then he went and there was a, there was a, 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 a water, a well. There was a well. The Prophet wasalam, he pulled up and he exposed his shins and he put his feet. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes and Hudayfa. Uh, uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he says, wait here, huh? let me go get permission. So he goes to the Prophet and he says, Abu Bakr wants to enter. He says, Bashirhu bil jannah. And he let him come, wa bashirhu bil jannah. And give him the glad tidings of jannah. So he enters, Abu Bakr enters, he comes and he sees the Prophet is sitting by the well. So he comes and he pulls his up and he sits in the well showing his shirk. Because the Prophet ﷺ was doing it. So he's going to do it. And he sits to the right. And then a short while later, Umar bin al-Khattab comes. And Abu Musa says, okay, wait here, let me go ask permission. And he goes and he asks permission. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, اِذِن لَهُ وَبَشِرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ He said, allow him to enter and give him glad tidings of Jannah. So Umar bin al-Khattab Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes in and he sits to the left of the Prophet وسلم, hanging his feet into the well. And then Uthman ibn Affan comes. And Abu Musa al-Ash'ari says, wait here, let me go get permission. And he goes and he gets permission and he says, اِذِن لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ مَعَ الْمُصِيبَةِ مَعَ الْمُصِيبَةِ تُصِيبُهُ O kama qal. He said, give him glad tidings of Jannah with a trial that would inflict him. وَقَدْ حَدَثْ And that occurred. That occurred because this, this, this manner of speaking out against the Khalifa and, and, the, and, and the leaders of the Muslims, it began to occur in the, in the Khilaf of Uthman ibn Affan. And we'll come to that point. And since that door was open with the killing of Umar bin al-Khattab, it has not been closed. It has not been closed. وَلِيَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى so he says, yes, there will be good. Yani after the killing of Uthman, there will, there will be good that will come after that. وَفِيهِ دَخَن And in it there will be yani some smoke. Yani it won't be pure. And the scholars, some of the scholars, they say the, the intent of that is the Khilafah of Muawiyah. Because the Khilafah of Muawiyah lasted for almost 20 years. And it gave, it gave uh, 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 power to the Muslims. Right? And, but many of the scholars, they say, it's a brother, it was a khilaf of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. It was a khilaf of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So he says, yes, but in it there will be dakhan. قُلْتُ وَمَا, وما دَخَنُ قَالَ قَوْمٌ يَسْتَنُّونَ بِغَيْرِ سُنَّةِ وَيَهْدُونَ بِغَيْرِ هَدْيِ تَعْرِفُ مِنْهُمْ وَتُنْكِرَ He said, you will have a people that will follow other than my sunnah. That will follow other than my sunnah. Follow other than my guidance. You will see things from them that are good. You will see things from them that are bad. So I said, so Hudayfa ibn Yaman, he said, well, then after that good, will there be evil? He said, yes. Du'atun ala abwabi jahannam. Man ajabahum ilayha qadafuhu fiha. He said, yes. After that good in which there is dakhan, there will be now more evil. There will be callers to the hellfire. Whoever answers them, they're going to push them into the fire. قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ شِفْهُمْ لَنَا So oh, Messenger of Allah, describe them for us. قَالَ نَعَمْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ جِلْدَتِنَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِنَا There will be a people from our 
يعني with our skin they are from us speaking our language قلت يا رسول الله فما ترى إن أدركني ذلك مسرب الله what do you see what should I do when I see these people calling to the doors of Jahannam when I see these people what should I do قال تلزم جماعة المسلمين وإمامهم Stick to the jama'ah of the Muslims and their imam. In another narration, tasma' wa tuti'a. Listen and obey. Wa in baraba dhahrak wa akhada malak. Even if, even if they beat your back and they take your wealth. This is the manhaj of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is it. And then you have from the Khawarij, this individual, Salman al Auda, years ago, Allah Yahdihi, Naam, this individual, Salman al Auda, years ago, he's asked a question because someone calls and says, you know, Islam, it came to further human rights. It came to further human rights. And the, the, the questioner, they had an issue. Because they said this hadith, it goes against human rights. It goes against human rights. In which hadith? When baraba bahrak wa akhada malak. And if they beat your back and they take your wealth. So the caller says, this is, yani, it's an issue. And this individual, Salman al Auda, he says, you're right. You're right. That after the Khulafa al-Rashidun, we did not advance as a society as it comes to human rights. This is what he begins his answer with. This is the reality of these individuals. Right? This is the reality of these individuals. Those that we hear our mashayikh and ulama warning against. This is the reality. Yes, you're right. After Khulafa al-Rashidun, we didn't advance as it comes to human rights. And he goes on to mention that, but now the issue is that the people they see in the Gharb, they see in the West, there's human rights. So now the people want what they want. And it's wrong when we explain that this is, yani, this is the asal in Baraba Vahrak wa akhada Malak, that we explain it as though this is the asal of Islam. Like, and, and what he means by this is like, you make this the asal of Islam. Number one, who on God's green earth has made this the asal of Islam? Tell me one person that said this is the asal of Islam, that the hakim should be a valim and we should be sabir. Who has said this? This is something new, right? I, uh, 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 I saw this individual, uh, 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 um, I don't like calling him hijab because hijab is an act of ibadah. So... Um, everyone knows who I'm talking about, right? And he's on this thing, on this whole tirade of, I think he was on something at the time. But, and if you explain to your child that Allah, he has a face, and he has eyes, and he has hands, and he has a shin, and he has a foot, who explains Allah to their kids like this? Tell me one thing, one time, anyone went to their kids and said, I'm going to describe Allah to you. Allah has a face, Allah has hands, Allah has a shin, Allah has feet, Allah has eyes. But rather, if you look at the books of the Salaf, if you look at the books of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, or you look at the books of Imam al-Barbahabi or Imam al-Tahawi, all of these books that we have taught, Aqidah wa Satiyah, uh, uh, all of these books of the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah that they have taught, is because if you open the door to make ta'wil of one thing, and make tahrif of one thing, then you open the door to make tahrif of anything you want to make tahrif of. I had someone call me, Ash'ari, or Shibhu Ash'ari, and he calls me, and he says, you say this. And if, if I say that Allah Ta'ala, uh, 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 He has a face, then that means Allah Ta'ala, He's like me. I said, do you say that Allah Ta'ala is, has wujud? Do you say that Allah is? Do you say that Allah can see? Do you say Allah can hear? Yes. So does that make Allah like you? Well, no. So what's the difference? Yes, but there's a, there's a difference. I said there's a difference in your mind. So tell me, who draws that line? You? You're going to draw the line? 
So this is something now you, you see from them, right? That what they do is that when the Salafi comes and we bring Kawaid and we bring Usul because you are breaking them, you're telling the people to revolt, you're speaking against the rulers. So we come and we say that even if the ruler is beating your back and taking your money, Allah's Prophet said, do not disobey. And the ruler is not even doing that to you. Then you come and say, you're making this the asal? How are we making this the asal? Rather, this is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Speaking of the names and attributes of Allah is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So you find that they, yani, they take from one another. They take from one another and they follow the same thing. From this hadith, even if in one of the, in one of the narrations, in one of the narrations, we have one more point to go through. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَسَيَقُومُ فِيهِمْ رِجَالٌ قُلُوبُهُمْ قُلُوبُ شَيَاطِينَ فِي جُثْمَانِ الْإِنْسِ He said that amongst these people that will come, there will be people that have the bodies of men. The bodies, uh, uh, the bodies of men, the hearts of shayateen. Even then, hear them and obey them. What can be worse than this? Is this not an asal? Is this not what the Prophet ﷺ, he said? And then, this new wave of, we're not making khuruj. We're just speaking out against their zulm. We're just speaking out against their ma'asiyah. This is what we're doing. Indeed, what was the manhaj of the salaf? I'm consolidating now. What time is Isha? The Qama? Seven minutes. What was the manhaj? What was the manhaj of the Salaf in advising the ruler? Now let's come to this. How did they advise the ruler? Did they advise the ruler upon the member? Did they advise the ruler by climbing up and speaking out? Is this how they advised? Al Imam Abu Bakr, Amr ibn Abi Asim. He mentions, Rahimallah Ta'ala, he has a bab, كَيْفَ نَصِيحَةُ الرَّعِيَّةِ لِلْوُلَاتِ How is it that the common people, how is it that they advise the ruler? قَالَ عِيَاضِ بْنِ غُنْمٍ لِحِشَامِ بْنِ حَكِيمٍ أَلَمْ تَسْمَعَ بِقَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَنْصَحَ لَدَيْ سُلْطَانِ فَلَا يُبْدِهِ عَلَانِيَةً وَلَكِنْ يَأْخُذْ بِيَدِهِ فَيَخْلُو بِهِ فَإِنْ فَإِنْ قَبِلَ مِنْهُ فَذَاكَ وَإِلَّا فَقَدْ كَانَ أَدَّ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ He said, Have you not heard what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? And let's stop here. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something, then every other statement falls below that. Every other statement, it falls below that. Every other statement, every other action falls below that. If the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says an order. It's a qa'idah. And if not that, then you can find statements. You can find statements from the Sahaba. Even some of the Sahaba, certain ilm did not reach them. Even some of the Sahaba, certain ilm did not reach them. So when there is a statement from the Prophet ﷺ, everything else is secondary. Everything else is secondary. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man arada an yansaha ladai sultan. The one who wants to advise the sultan, the leader. Fala yubdihi alaniyatan. Do not go and pronounce that out in the open. Don't pronounce it in the open. Walakin yakhud bi yadihi fa yakhlu bihi. Take his hand. Take him somewhere where no one can see. Advise him over there. فَإِنْ قَبِلَ مِنْهُ If it is accepted, that advice is accepted, فَذَاكْ Then that is what is wanted, that the advice was accepted. وَإِلَّا قَدْ كَانَ أَدَّ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ If he does not accept the advice, 
then he did what is an obligation upon him. Hadithun sahahahu al-allamatu al-albani rahimahullahu ta'ala. This is the order of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Order of the Prophet. This guy, and these are the people that are getting famous nowadays, right? Because this is how you get famous. You don't get famous by privately advising someone. No one YouTube follows you for doing that. It doesn't happen. So some of these people that are showing themselves nowadays, right? This guy, Muslim skeptic, I don't even know, can't even pronounce the guy's name. But the guy is Khariji to the bone. Speaking about this, Hukuma speaking, you, you don't even live there. Don't even live there. You want to advise someone. The messenger of Allah والسلام, said, take him by the hand. Take them to the side, advise them. If they accept, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ta'ala. If they don't accept, then you have done what is your obligation. You have completed the obligation upon you. Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrates. And Sa'id ibn Jumhan, he says, Qala ataytu Abdullah ibn Awfa. He went to Abdullah ibn Awfa, he was in Basra. He said, فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ He said, I gave him salams. قَالَ لِي مَنْ أَنْتَ He said to me, who are you? فَقُلْتُ أَنَا سَعِيدِ ibn Jumhan. I'm Sa'id ibn Jumhan. قَالَ فَمَا فَعَلَ وَالِدُكَ What did your father do? Abdurrahman ibn Awfa, he says, what did your father do? قَالَ قُلْتُ قتلته الأزارقة. This is a group from the Khawarij, they killed him. قال لعن الله الأزارقة. لعن الله الأزارقة. حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنهم كلاب النار. He said, may Allah Ta'ala, uh, Allah's curse be upon them. Allah's curse be upon, Allah's curse be upon the Azariqa. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم informed us that they are the dogs of the fire. قلت Al-Azariqa tu wahdahum am al-Khawarij kulluha. He said, just Al-Azariqa, just them, or all of the Khawarij are the Kilab al-Nar. Qala bala al-Khawarij kulluha. He said, all of the Khawarij are the dogs of the fire. Qala, he said, Qultu fa inna sultana yadlimu al-Nasa wa yaf'alu bihim. So he says to Abdurrahman ibn Awfa, radhi Allah ta'ala anhu, he said, the Sultan, he's oppressing the people, he's doing this to the people, he's doing this to the people. قَالَ فَتَنَاوَلَ يَدِي فَغَمَزَ هَبِيَدِهِ غَمْزَةً شَدِيدَةً ثُمَّ قَالَ وَيْحَكْ وَيْحَكْ يَا بْنَ جُمْحَانِ He took him by the hand and he said, وَيْحَكْ He said, woe be to you, يَا بْنَ جُمْحَانِ عَلَيْكَ بِالسَّوَادِ الْأَعْظَمِ Upon you is a sawad al-a'zam, yani stick, the advice of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Huh? The advice to the Messenger of Allah Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stick to the Jama'ah and their Imam. So he said, Alayka bi sawad al-a'zam. Yani stick to the Jama'ah under the Wali al-Amr. In kana sultanu yasma'u minka, if the Sultan is going to listen to you, fa'tihi fi baytih, go to him in his house. Advise him. فَأَخْبِرْهُ بِمَا تَعْلَمْ Tell him what you know. فَإِنْ قَبِلَ مِنْكَ وَإِلَّا فَدَعْهُ فَإِنَّكَ لَسْتَ بِأَعْدَمَ مِنْهُ He said if he's going to listen to you, advise him. If not, then leave him. You don't know more than him. Abdul Rahman, now we have a sahabi. Abdul Rahman ibn Awfa. Saying the same thing. Advise secretly. Advise privately. Don't advise upon the member. If you can't advise upon the member in front of a group of people, and a group from the masjid, what about on YouTube? Or Instagram? And Abi Wa'il qala, qila li Usamata, he was said to Usama, and Usama ibn Zayd, bin al-Harith, bin Haritha, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, it was said to him, law atayta fulanan fakallamtahu, if you were to go to such and such person and speak to them. Speak to them meaning advise them. 
And Usama, Usama ibn Zayd was from those that were close to Uthman ibn Affan. And there was fitan that occurred in the time of Uthman ibn Affan. Anhu. So some of the people they came to, they came to Usama uh, uh, and they said, why don't you go and talk to Uthman? And here there's a point of benefit. That the reason they came to the reason they came to uh, uh, Usama bin Zaid is because Usama was from those that were close to Uthman, radiAllahu taala anhu. Qala, Inna kum la tarona anni la ukalimuhu illa usmiyukum. He said, so all of you think that I haven't spoken to him because you haven't heard me speak to him. Meaning, you want me to speak to him? How do you know I haven't spoken to him? Just because you didn't hear me speak to him, I didn't call him out in front of the people and speak to him in front of all of you. Inni ukalimuhu fi sirri. I speak to him in private. Duna an aftahababan akunu awwal man fatahahu. I say I speak to him in private, lest I should be the man who opens up a door that I'm the first one who opened that door. That I'm the first one who opened that door. وَلَا أَقُولُ لِرَجُلٍ أَنْ كَانَ عَلَيَّ أَمِيرًا إِنَّهُ خَيْرُ النَّاسِ بَعْدَ شَيْءٍ سَمِعْتُهُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then he says, I would never say to a man, yani who is the Amir upon me, or the Amir of two people, that he's the best of the people. And he says this so as to show that I'm not silent. Yani what we are speaking of here, Ikhwan, Akhawat, and we'll end on this point. We'll end on this point. What we're speaking of here is not to put a seal of approval upon everything which is done by the hakim. That's not what we're speaking of. This is what? And this is what? Usama ibn Zayd is saying. That lest you think that I'm just quiet and I'll go with every... If I see something wrong, I'm going to say something. But I'm going to say something in a manner in which there is maslaha. In which there is benefit. In which there is benefit. And I'm not going to say something in a manner because of which a greater harm then comes out of it. And if you look at the explanation of this hadith, we speak of al mudahana wal mudarat. Right? And al mudahana is to what? It's to put that, yani, to take a look at what is haram and to put it into a positive light. Well, mudarat is that you take what is being done and is haram and you dislike that and you hate it in your heart and you advise but you advise with hikmah perhaps you don't try to fix everything at the same time so you go and you advise and then you step away and you come back and you advise and you step away and you come back and you advise and the entire time you hate what is haram. You hate what they're doing from what is haram. This is the farq. This is what we are calling to. Advising the hakim. Just as we advise each other. Just as you would love to be advised. Just as you would love that if you had an error, that someone will come and not speak upon you, upon the member. But would rather come to you and take your hand and take you to the side and advise you to the side. We can't take someone in our own house advising us on many occasions. The husband goes to the wife, the wife goes to the husband, and there's three hours of madness. Until someone comes to their senses and says, Khalas, you're right. And you want the Amir of the Muslims, those that are running entire countries, to take your advice off of YouTube. This is an asal as Al Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Rahmatullahi Ta'ala alayhi. He said, Thumma Sara, Hada al Aslu la yu'raf in the akthar man yedda'i al ilma fa kaif al amal bihi. Many of the people they don't even know this asal. You speak to many of the people about this and they look at you like you have two heads or three heads or four heads. Some of those uh, 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 orientalists. That, that look at us, right? 
and they refer to us in this manner or that manner. And from the arguments they present is that, and they refer to us with the name, and, and they say, but you find them always focusing on, on ibadat. That's all, they're, focused, they're teaching the people aqidah, they're teaching the people wudu, and they're teaching the people fiqh, and they're teaching the people, and, and, and they're saying this in what? In a negative light. Like this is what these Salafis do. And as, as I'm reading it, I'm thinking of the, the athar of Salman al-Farisi, when the Jew came, and he said, قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ كُلَّ شَيْنْ حَتَّى الْخِرَاءَةَ And your Prophet taught you everything, even going to the bathroom? Huh? And Salman al-Farsi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, يعني, with pride, yes. قَدْ نَهَانَا أَنَّ نَسْتَقْبِلَ الْقِبْلَةَ بِغَائِتٍ أَوْ بَوْلٍ Right? No, we were prohibited. We were told not to face the Qibla. نَبِيُّنَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَشْرَفُ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ The best of creation. He taught the people how to make wudu properly. He taught the people how to pray properly. And he would sit in the masjid and he would watch the people as they prayed. And when they made a mistake and they came, he would correct them. And he taught the people regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he taught the people the names and attributes of Allah. And he taught the people how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Isa ibn Maryam did the same thing. And Musa ibn Imran did the same thing. And Ibrahim alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the same thing. This is the manhaj. This is the manhaj of the Prophets. This is the manhaj of the Prophet. That the people are now leaving off for something that occurred maybe a hundred years ago, maybe two hundred years ago. Wa nasallallahu ala afiyata wa salamata min kulli shar. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in. Allah ta'ala yubarik fikum wa jizikum khairah.